What up guys and welcome back. Uh, today we have a very, very interesting video for you. Um, something interesting has happened, as you can probably tell by the title of this video. Yes, Mia has laid some eggs. Now a video like this is actually somewhat not difficult to make, but you're not gonna make everyone happy with the end result. It's just one of those things where there are so many different options on how to handle a situation like this. Uh, some people are gonna be happy. Some people are gonna be very angry and very upset. Some people are gonna be very confused and probably are gonna learn a lot today. Now, before we start, if you guys haven't seen the video uh, we put up last year, they built a nest where it basically shows the initial <laughs> nesting stage of how this all started. Definitely go and watch that first. It kind of introduces you to everything that did happen then on that first run. I did answer a whole bunch of questions on our thoughts of the whole reason why we kind of let it happen. So I'm not gonna really go into everything I did in that big 17 minute long video, but definitely check that out if you are new to this page and then come back for this video. So when did the nesting start? I'd say probably a good couple of months ago now, Mikey was in there first. He basically just went back to the bathroom. It was, you know, his stomping grounds from last year. He knows it very, very well. And Mia didn't really care at all. She didn't even entertain the fact of that nest for a good maybe month or two. I think Mikey just stumbled up there by himself. He hung out there, sat on the floor, and then came back down to hang out with us. And just really quickly for everyone who keeps thinking, why are you letting them nest now? It's just one of those things where we did try and stop it this year. I mean, obviously we're not trying our absolute hardest for many, many reasons as we did last year. Now, last year we tried to tear every nest down everywhere we could when they were looking for places to nest and they kept rebuilding, kept rebuilding, and it got to a point where they were getting really frustrated. They were getting very, very loud because nature is basically telling them to do something. And we kind of thought, who are we to kind of stop that in that sense? Now this year, Mikey, you know, he's straight in the bathroom. He's preparing this nest. And it was just one of those things where we're like, you know what, let's just try and stop this. So we kept that bathroom door closed for a while and he just started camping outside it. We even put a very, very similar replica of it in their actual aviary, like a box, kind of similar materials and stuff like that. So they could actually have this in their aviary. Uh, but they weren't interested in it at all. We actually bought wood, we bought kind of fake vines, we kind of raised it high so they'd feel safe and it was a bit more wild-like and still nothing. Now, if you're new here, you might be like, are you nesting to have babies? Uh, no, we're not. This was just something that they kept trying and trying and trying to do. Mikey's now eight, Mia turns six in a couple of months. So it's basically kind of wired into them to do this. Now, I know some people will keep their birds apart for this kind of time, but you know, Mikey and Mia, they're in love with each other. They fly together, they preen together, they feed each other. Um, it would just be completely heartbreaking to kind of split that up. Now, Mia joined this nest probably about a month or so after Mikey started kind of creating it, I guess. She decided to start spending time with them there and uh, they were getting super close, you know, they were kind of making love or whatever you want to call it. They seemed like they were having fun. I don't know if they actually ever did it right. Obviously, you know, we weren't watching every time. Um, I mean, that does sound weird to say, but even times when we posted this stuff on social media, people are like, why are you even filming that? I mean, for me, it's quite fascinating to kind of see how it works. The nest this year, now some people thought it was a bit worse than last year. You know, last year they were kind of chasing us down the stairs and um, we couldn't really walk on our landing without them coming at us. I think it was a bit more relaxing this year. I think it was because we were prepared for it. So as long as we didn't get too close, we were totally fine. Uh, we still put them in the aviary every night to sleep and they'd still, you know, come out. Mummy Human did most of that. They were really, really bonded with her. She could basically hang out in that bathroom with them all day and all night if she wanted to and they would be totally fine. But the moment they were outside of that landing, the moment they were in the lounge or in the garden, the exact same birds we've always had that were totally sweet. We were still flying them through this entire period as well. Like we'd still fly, I don't know, not probably as often because they weren't so energetic in that sense. They didn't really need to leave the house. They didn't need to get their energy out. They'd rather just sit on the bathroom floor all day, but, but maybe three or four times a week would get out. They'd still do massive, massive flies. And they were actually super, super reliable. Unlike last year when they were kind of off 
hunting for places to nest, I think. This year they've been so much better. Um, huge, huge flies, wanting to come home every single time, straight back to the nest as always. Now it was earlier this week, Tuesday around five o'clock in the afternoon, we were gonna go fly. Uh, we had Mikey and Mama Human was gonna go grab Mia from the nest. By the way, Mikey's actually been spending less and less time in the nest and kind of just leaving Mia there. He gets over it real quick and just kind of wants to hang out. So Mummy Human went to the nest to grab Mia. Now, as she went to get her, she actually noticed there was an egg literally sitting under her crop. Now, this moment was absolutely crazy for us. We were honestly under the impression that she wouldn't lay because, you know, we're putting her in the aviary every night. You know, she's not there to kind of guard that egg. And when we saw that, we were just both kind of speechless. We didn't know what to do. Um, we weren't sure if Mikey knew what was going on because he was, you know, not really there being with her as the good husband he should be. He was kind of hanging out downstairs. He would only kind of come up if we were there or the odd occasion, sometimes he'd want to be with Mia, but just nowhere near as much as she would spend time in that nest. Now, when we saw that egg, the first thing that really, really kind of blew my mind was the fact Mummy Human could sit there with Mia the whole time, she could pick up the egg um, she could hold it, she could hang out, stroke Mia's head, and they'd be perfectly fine. You know, you hear these horror stories when birds start breeding and they start laying and the breeders or the owners can't get close to those birds without having blood drawn. And I think that is the case with most breeders. They literally, you know, they lock these birds up for decades and decades on end. They literally just feed them super high protein diets so they keep laying and laying and then they steal their babies year after year after year. So the difference I think here is, you know, we are somewhat of a family and these birds do trust us. So it was absolutely crazy to kind of see Mummy Human in that nest. I was super, super close to holding that egg on multiple occasions. And that trust there was actually really, really, really special and real. And it was at this point we were kind of thinking, what do we do now? Now, this was a really, really kind of sad, heartbreaking situation. Um, Mummy Human's actually been in tears a few times over this, uh, just because there's four main options. They're all not that great. There's positives and massive negatives to all. And this has been a ridiculously hard decision for us. And we've had to kind of weigh out loads of different pros and cons, which is exactly why I'm making this video. The purpose of this is to kind of answer any questions before they get asked and also answer this massive question everyone on socials has been asking since Tuesday, where is Mia? It's crazy how many of you noticed she's not um, in as many stories as normal. Thanks for the love and thanks for caring, guys. These four options. Option number one, which a lot of people are familiar with, uh, replace the eggs with dummies, uh, boil the egg, shake the egg so it scrambles. She'll sit on it for, you know, a month or so, realize it hasn't hatched, and then kind of get over it and move on with life. Um, that's basically what a lot of people end up doing if they have a male and female bird and they don't want more. Now with that option, it's not the worst. Firstly, we don't know if that egg is fertile. It does take around seven to 10 days to actually see if that egg is actually fertile. It could be fertile, it couldn't. You know, it's one of those situations where we're never ever gonna know. Mia might think it is. You know, she probably does. You know, she's been making sweet love with Mikey and now this egg's popped up. Maybe she thinks it's her chance to have a baby. But there is a massive chance that those two holes did not line up when they were kind of rubbing together. And it's just one of those things where she is gonna lay an egg regardless. Female macaws without a male will still lay eggs, just like chickens do kind of thing. So the chances that it's not fertile, that she would have just sat on it for 28 days or 30 days and then got over it is extremely high as well. Is that a risk we're willing to take? Probably not. So that was option number one. Either replace the eggs with dummies, boil it, shake it so it scrambles. Basically, make sure that egg does not hatch. Option number two, which I honestly think is a bit more cruel, but it's kind of a bit more natural as well. Let her sit on it, if it's fertile, let it hatch, and let them try and raise it. Now, usually the first clutch a bird will ever have 
they are gonna fail as parents. They don't really know exactly what to do. Like right now, Mia's even running out of that nest now and then, not often, but she doesn't know to sit on that egg 24 seven. She kind of does, you know, she's, Pretty much they had 23 and a half hours a day. Oh, that's another thing. Yeah, we don't put her in the aviary anymore just so she doesn't worry and worry and worry and have anxiety over that egg being in a separate room. So she's basically in that bathroom, you know, 23.9 hours a day. She pops out to poo now and then, and that's about it. But back to the point. Now, keep in mind, Mikey being a father, he's absent from this nest a lot. Like he's, he's literally right here right now. She's up there guarding it and he's just sitting here um, eating Raspberry leaf tea bags, yeah. So, if that egg does hatch, they'll try their best to keep it alive. They will. So when I say they, I mean mostly Mia. Mikey, you know, he'll, he'll try. He'll maybe try to, he'll kind of chase us out of the door now and then, and then he'll come downstairs when the postman arrives. And then if the landscapers come back to do the garden, he'll want to go see what they're doing. He, he gets very easily distracted. I mean, I'm not doubting his skills as a father, but, you know, they're probably going to be around a three out of 10 for now. For now. Who knows? But there is a very, very high chance they wouldn't have the knowledge to actually raise that chick. Uh, there's a very high chance it would die its, on its own without the help of us, which we would have actually stayed out of just to, you know, keep things as natural as possible. And that would have been a pretty cool process. Most of the time when people do breed birds in captivity, humans are always there helping out. They're always syringe feeding, making sure the weights are on point, making sure they have what they need. So if we did leave it up to them, that would have been one of their lessons to learn. Oh, we screwed up this time, let's try to do better next time. But then again, there is gonna be a lot of next times. There's decades and decades of next time. So we have to think about this stuff as well. This option might actually be quite traumatic for them, um, seeing one of their young die of starvation or they might sit on them or eat them or I don't know. But um, we also don't really want them to get better and better at being parents as this isn't something we wish in our lives, which I will continue to basically explain. Option number three in, hey look, Mikey's come to join us in the background enjoying a walnut. We let them hatch, we help out, and we keep them. Now, with this option, keep in mind, this will happen every year. She's gonna lay two, maybe three eggs every single year for, for decades to come. Say, for example, two macaws, we hatch this time, we grow them, we keep them, we have four in the house. Year after, we have six. Year after, we have eight. Like, at what point do we say no? You know, Mummy Human was in tears over this. You know, why can't we just let Mia raise her family? Why can't we just let them have this one? What happens next year, the year after, the year after that? I mean, we have a life as well, which we need to stay sane through. We can't have a house full of macaws. Honestly, I don't want another one. I don't want another 50 over the years. So. It was one of those situations and you guys might hate on this. You might say we're selfish, you know, they deserve a family. Yeah, they do. And if we could take them to the wild, we would. And they can have all the eggs and babies they want. Like if anyone out there does know a way, we can get them to the wild safely where we are hundred percent sure they are gonna live and thrive with the right training and environments to set them up for success forever, honestly, let us know. We will do our absolute best to make sure they are happy. But that option, yeah, that wasn't really gonna work. And then there's option four, sell them. That's what most people would do, right? You know, these eggs are worth a lot of money. And you know, the even weird thing, the fact they are kind of Mikey and Mia's, if that is even a thing, I guess we could add a little bit more on. And you know what? We're kind of a need for money right now. You know, we're buying this house that we're in. The whole garden's getting renovated as we speak. The eggs could cover literally half our garden renovations, probably more. But it's one of those things where where will that bird end up? Now, the amount of people that have said, you know, find a great home, find some good people. Saying things like that is a bit crazy. I mean, this bird community, everyone has good intentions. Everyone wants to do their absolute best for their birds and care for them and keep them forever and ever and ever until they don't. You know, we, we try to hang out with bird people with very similar interests. You know, a lot of our friends are free flyers, you know, their diets are on point, their bird cares to another level, their raveries look great. And then I looked through Mia's third birthday video and there was, I think, around 20 birds there. And everyone there, very, very, very like-minded people. 
and right now, this is nearly three years ago now, 38.9% of those birds are no longer with their owners. These are people who are good owners, great owners. <laughs> And the thing is right now, with birds like macaws, I did mention earlier in that video a year ago that rescues are packed to the brim. People are literally getting rid of these birds every single day. We get messages from people who wanna give us their birds or find new homes to them because they can't give them a good life. And we've actually rehomed, I think around six of them in the last maybe year to year and a half. It's crazy. And we're super stoked that we have done this. Um, but the messages are still coming through and we don't know who else to give birds to. But I did mention in that last video, it'll get to a point where if everyone is on that page of, I wanna buy a baby bird, no one is gonna take these birds that are getting given up. And I did mention once rescues are filled up and everyone thinks in this mentality, getting an animal that'll outlive you as a baby, which is kind of nuts, birds will start getting euthanized and that's actually what is happening now. Like there's literally macaws getting put to sleep because there is no one to take them. Now it's crazy, to this day, I see around people buying these baby birds when there are literally thousands and thousands of birds that are in need of new homes. And it honestly does make me sick. I've started distancing myself from it because it honestly, it's super, super, super sad to see. There's literally birds locked in cages, locked in rescues. They're literally getting killed no one's willing to put in a few months to fix them. Instead, they get a baby, which they're more than likely just gonna give away, which is absolutely nuts. Which brings me to an interesting point, which is completely off topic. Now, I know I'm rambling in this video, but let me ramble for a bit. Humans, I think, are one of the only species in the world that think, hey, you know what? I'm gonna go take another species baby for my own entertainment. Now, the reason for that, I don't know. I mean, are people bored with their own friends and family? Are their lives not full enough? I mean, I don't know. I'm not trying to attack anyone here. It's just, what makes a person pay another person a large amount of money to steal another species baby off them that should technically be living in the wild, in the rainforest, free, bring it into their home, made of brick, timber, and plasterboard, and think, hey, you're here now for my entertainment. Now, I know that may sound harsh, but that is the reality of it. You know, there's people out there buying these super, super rare birds, which is just disgusting in a way. Like, these birds are kind of going almost extinct in the wild, and then there's breeders out there pumping them out, and they're like, hey, give me 10K and I'll steal a baby off the parents, which I've had caged up in an aviary for decades, and you can show it off on your socials and feel cool, well done. And you know the really sad thing about humans in this sense, if the breeders weren't there to supply these humans who need to take another species from their parents to put in homes where they don't belong, is they would pay someone to fly to the Amazon, to a natural habitat, steal a baby out of a nest, or steal a bird, or steal a pair of birds, bring them back over here, in literally coke bottles, smuggle them over, or something crazy like that, and sell them here illegally. Like, that is the extent of what we do, as people. And that is why breeders exist. To stop humans paying people to steal birds out of the wild. And you kind of sit down and think about it. It's like, what is actually wrong with us? Like, why can't we as people just be happy with what we have around us, our friends, our family, you know? Now, I'm not saying we're excluded from this at all. I mean, I have no idea why they are in our house. I mean, that's all mummy human from six, seven, seven years ago, crazy. And that was a crazy spare of the moment decision, which I'll never ever recommend to anyone. But for those who don't know, my Kimia came from people who did buy them from breeders as babies, realized very fast that they aren't fun pets, and we decided to take them on and care for them. And everyone else out there who has done that, taken on a bird which someone has given up, honestly, well done. And I'm not saying anyone out there who has bought baby birds are terrible people. I mean, a lot of people out there don't know the extent of these birds. Literally locked in cages, stuck in rescues, getting euthanized, up for sale every single day. That isn't really public knowledge. You know, you see videos from people like us, and this is a huge reason we have taken a brief stop on YouTube. You know, videos started going nuts a few years back and people were like, I wanna do the same, I wanna do the same. And they went out and bought these birds and realized, oh, it's not as fun as it looks online and got rid of them real quick. So I hate the fact that we were a part of that problem. Um, we do our absolute best to 
not post, you know, overly cute videos. Sometimes we do, but we do our best to actually educate in that sense because it is honestly a really, really big problem. And the amount of people who've seen our videos, um, the Don't Buy My Core one, the Days in the Lives, anything like that, the comment thread that goes down and down and down that basically says, I'm so glad I watched this video. I was just about to buy a Macaw and now I've realized that commitment it takes. I'm not going to do that. Like that makes this all worth it. It really, really does. And that's the only reason this channel's still going. We've kind of lost a little bit of passion in making videos for a couple of reasons. You know, it did start encouraging more people to buy birds and they'd message us for advice when their birds weren't exactly how they expected because they didn't get a Mikey or Mia because they just saw lots of fun things online. And we do honestly try our best to post the bad stuff, but it's also hard to post the bad stuff when you're trying to control the bad stuff at the same time. And number two, it's also much easier to kind of just relax and uh, enjoy a day instead of kind of vlogging it every second of every day. Um, I know I've gone way off track here, but I think that's why we're not gonna sell these birds. Honestly, if you want a bird, save one that is in need. There's multiple breeders out here throwing hundreds and hundreds of birds out a year. And the people who buy these baby birds, they never see these bad points. They say things like, oh, well, it was already hatched if, if I didn't take it someone else would have, you know? And it's just one of those things where it's a bit ridiculous because breeding is a business. The moment you take that baby bird away, that breed is gonna be like, boom, I just made a couple of grand, time to get those birds breeding again, supply and demand, supply and demand. I once had a breeder message me because a bunch of his birds got sick and he said he lost 20 grand worth of stock one day, stock. Like a grocery store where all the eggs fell off the shelf, stock kind of thing. Like that's how these people see these birds. So if you do buy that baby, what you have to realize is firstly, a bird in desperate need for a home didn't get one. Who knows where that bird will end up? Hopefully it doesn't die. Secondly, those parents of that bird you have are now gonna be forced to breed again, lay more eggs and have those babies taken away. And I've heard when these babies do get taken away from their parents, they go crazy. They scream and scream and scream as obviously I guess you would if your baby got taken away from you. And you have to think when you did take that baby, what happens to the next one? Who's gonna take that one? Is it gonna be one of those ones that go through 10 homes in 10 years and then get euthanized? Who knows where they end up? And the thing is with humans, we like to modify things for our convenience. So some of these birds are getting clipped. Some of these birds are getting beaks cut off because you know, they bite. Some of these birds are getting abused because they scream. Most of these birds are getting locked up in cages for hours and hours and hours a day. These are birds who should be flying miles. They should be stimulated. They have the intelligence of a three-year-old child and it's super, super sad. And on that topic of stealing a different species baby to have for our own entertainment, seriously, what other animal does that? Like, do you ever see an elephant be like, hey, you know what, Mr. Giraffe? I'm gonna steal your baby and it's gonna come hang out with me. I'm gonna put it in my elephant hut and see how life goes. Like it, it doesn't happen. <laughs> and the thing is when we do put these wild animals into our home and the thing is they are still wild animals. Like they are literally in the wild as we speak. It's not like dogs. You don't really see a labradoodle running around in the wild, do you? No, they have been domesticated and rebred and rebred and kind of transformed into whatever they are today uh, for many, many, many years. But these macaws are literally still wild and we're putting them into these homes and these weird artificial conditions of heat and humidity and air conditioning and they are getting sick and a bunch of them start plucking. You know, the amount of people that message us saying my birds are plucking, why? I mean, you've literally taken an animal from the wild and you brought it into your home. Plucking is not something that happens in the wild. It's a disease of captivity and the ranges of reasons it could be are absolutely endless. And some people, I understand, you know, they might blame breeders for pushing out too many birds and these birds are sick and stuff like that. But you know what? The one thing I do kind of have against breeders, I mean, I have a lot against breeders, as you probably have guessed from half this video, but I think natural selection is a very, very important thing in nature. Uh, say for McCaw, for example, lays three eggs. Most of the time, one, maybe two, Usually one won't make it. In the wild, they'll pick the two strongest, they'll let the weak one die. You may have seen videos online of storks, you know, taking the weakest grunt, throwing it around a bit, and then basically chucking it off a cliff or something crazy like that. That's natural selection. A lot of these birds that are in circulation right now shouldn't actually be alive. But you know what breeders think? They think, you know what? We're gonna make every single one of these eggs hatch, even if they are weak, and we're gonna sell them because we're gonna make a couple of grand and that's gonna help pay off our mortgage. So it's one of those things as well. But just to get back on topic, now the nesting time, honestly, it's not a bad time. 
They're a lot more chill this year. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to attack us. Mm -hmm. I love that they trust us. And even today, I was in the nest, literally just laying there, giving Mikey a cuddle. Uh, Mia was there. She was pretty chill the whole time as well. And I don't know a whole lot about how affectionate birds are when they are breeding or when they are sitting on eggs from what I've seen, what I've heard. It's a rare thing. So I'm quite happy that we do have that relationship and trust. And I think that's why it kind of feels quite sad to actually break that trust. Um, not that they know. It's one of those things where, you know, um, they trusted us and we've kind of let them down. It was fascinating just really kind of watch her move and play with that egg. The fact she's so gentle with it is just adorable to see. And if you haven't clicked on yet, we did choose option one, um, which was either replace with dummy, boil the egg, um, shake it so it kind of scrambles. Option two, three, and four just weren't a viable option for us. Uh, for the many, many, many reasons we listed and rambled on. Sorry, I left this till the end. Basically, uh, I think it was maybe day two or day three uh, when Mia was in the aviary doing her poo. Uh, we took the egg and we gave it a quick boil. We accidentally actually cracked it a tiny bit and the next day Mia laid another one. <laughs> so the first one was discarded uh, by Mia. I mean, she still keeps a close eye on it, but it's not her primary egg. She keeps under her crop. The new egg's still there. That's been given a good shake. Uh, so that one there's hopefully scrambled a little bit. Now after the cracked egg went back, I think it got cracked a little bit more and she was a bit sad. So Mummy Human gave her like a scarf to kind of lay on or rest her eggs on, I don't know. It, the situation's just kind of crazy, but um, we want her to be happy. So we kind of helped out with that nest a little bit just so she's not too stressed out. It's one of those things where now she'll sit on these eggs for maybe a month. She'll think, you know what? Mikey didn't do it right and she'll get over it and she might try again next year who knows but right now that decision we have made a lot of people are going to be like you know what you've literally just killed some macaws sometimes I do feel and I don't think we have killed macaws maybe maybe we have I mean I guess it's one of those like abortion things where when is it really a baby I don't know let's not get into that right now but it's one of those things where I honestly do feel these birds will live a happier life dead or not existing than if they were out in people's homes, passed on home to home to home, depressed or in terrible conditions or end up in rescues or end up dead anyway. You know, it's, it's one of those things where they deserve to be in the wild. That's where they're meant to be. I mean, I know people who have had seven, eight, nine birds and then you literally half of them either died, got injured, flew away, they all got replaced. Some of them didn't work, so they got rehomed. They got replaced again. It's like almost kind of trading Pokemon cards and I would hate that to happen to my Kimia's babies. I think they're happier, just not existing if that makes sense. Right now, all we can do is our best to keep my Kimia happy and alive and active, you know. We haven't flown Mia all week. Uh, we don't want to take her away from her eggs. Mikey, we just let him out the door. He doesn't want to go too far. So he kind of laps around the block now and then. He has a lot of fun. He's still pretty social and pretty happy to be around. Um, I don't even think if he knows there's an egg in there. I mean, he seems pretty protective. I hate the fact we have to make this decision and it is hard to make. It really, really is. Uh, Mummy Human's been in tears about it a lot. And I wish there was another way. Um, we even kind of looked into sending the eggs to the wild, but putting eggs on a plane basically scrambles them more than we could do with our hands anyway, so who knows. Mia hasn't been downstairs much since Tuesday at all. I think once we took her down today uh, just to see what she'd do. And the moment she came down here, she saw Mikey come down and then she ran straight back up. She was like, I need to protect this egg. We don't really know what the outcome is going to be with this nesting situation, when it's going to end. But honestly, it's not too bad for us in a living situation. They're dead silent. They don't come down to the lounge. They eat up there. They poop in the aviary. We leave it open. You know, even if we go out, we don't have to lock them up or anything. We'll just shut the bedroom doors, shut the office doors and all the other doors and they have kind of free range of the hallway and their nest. For us, it's it's honestly super chill. For them, I hope they don't go through anything too traumatic. Um, but like I said earlier, it's one of those things where she might just think, oh, they're not fertilized. Oh, well, let's get on with normal life and try again next year. Any questions, feel free to ask. Also, we are doing Mia's birthday at Turvey House. 
huge public event in Bedfordshire this year. First of Mia's birthday that has been public. You can bring your birds, you can bring your babies, you can bring your mums. Tickets are available, I'll put a link in the description as well. They're super cheap as well, and all proceeds go to World Parrot Trust. We're basically collaborating with them. If you guys do want to come hang out, if Mia is on form, then hopefully she is. It's about a month away, so hopefully she's up to come. If not, she can hang out in the nest, and Mikey would love to come and hang out and meet all you guys. But for anything else, we'll be doing daily updates on our Instagram, which we usually do kind of daily stories and the odd reel here and there. Uh, Facebook, which basically is the same, and our TikTok when we have time. But for now, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.